Hey there everybody, this is John Muller from the JP Muller Group and today we're going to talk about how we can have dependent dropdowns. So this is a problem I've, I've seen or a challenge that people have had forever, right? And here's a setup. I have data that's in a sheet. I have rows of information and in one column I want you to be able to select something. And based on what you select in that one column, the parent column, in the child column, I want to limit what you could enter to a selection that is relevant to what you chose in the first column, right? So if I choose fruit in the first column, I want to choose a, from a, a list of fruit in the second column. If I want to choose a vehicle in the, you know, like trucks in the left column, I want to choose from selection of trucks in the right column, right, the child column. So here's the setup. First of all, I'm going to have my data sheet and I'm going to have a mapping sheet. So let me jump to the mapping sheet for a second. And across the top, I'm going to have my categories or the parent items that I want to select from. And then given those parents, if I choose trucks, I want to show you what's underneath that, right? So we have trucks, fruit, appliances, house and animals. In the data sheet, I have one validation rule and I'm showing it to you. And basically it's saying that for this column from row two on, I am looking at the mapping sheet, the first row. So I'm showing all those as options. So if I go down here, you'll see that I could choose trucks, let's say. And in a second, you're going to see that all of a sudden I have a drop down on the left. But also what you're going to see, let me go and show you these um, data validations again, you're going to see it added one for B2, just for that cell, B2. And what B2 is now looking at is that one column A on that mapping sheet. So similarly, if I go and I choose trucks again for the next row, three, it's going to go add validation for B3. But it just added it to the current rule because both of those rules use truck as the parent. Let's say I want to add something else like fruit. Now what you're going to see is because we have to look at a different column, it's smart enough to go add another rule here for B4. And B4 is going to look at that second or third column there on the next sheet. So now if I choose that dropdown, you can see I could choose pair here. I could still choose ram here. I could use Ford here. If I want to go then and choose truck here again for five, you'll note that it will now add, so I could choose from um, our trucks, and it added in the rule on the right that B5. So it's, it, it's smart enough not to add a separate rule for every row, but to edit the, the rule that pertains to that choice that I want. So let's go add a couple more. Let's do another one for fruit, peach. Let's do animals. And let's see, the animals will come up in a second here. We'll do that. But let's take it a step further. This thing's smart enough that if I go here and I say, I want to add another column and I'll say, you know, names. And I'll put Bob, Jeff, Sally, Mary, right? You. All right, and I'm going to go back to the data sheet. Now it's smart enough to give me that choice. And now when I go here, it adds that rule and I see people's names. So it's pretty flexible as you could see. Now let's see something else that it does. We have one row for animals. What happens if all of a sudden I delete animals here? you're going to see that it looks over to the right and it's going to make a decision that this no longer applies and it's going to remove that. Uh, similarly, if I now delete three of them, what would happen? It's smart enough to cycle through the whole range and take them out as well. So this is a pretty flexible um, set of script, if you will. Um, let me show you a visual of what it's doing. Basically, it follows this flowchart. Down bottom, it's just showing you the different sheets and showing you some fields and information. But basically, the first there's, there's three sets of decision, if you will. The first one is, you know, I'm going to detect any selection change in the sheet. 
If you're not on the tab that where you're entering your data, then I could ignore it. That's the first thing. Are you even on the tab that I need to consider? If you are on the tab, then I want to say, are you in one of the data rows? So if you're in row one, that's the headings. I don't care about that. I end. However, if you are on that tab and if you are on that row, I'm going to first look if there's a value in the parent cell. So if there is a value entered in there, like, you know, vehicle, appliance, fruit, then I'm going to go to the next decision. And the next decision is, is that parent in the mapping sheet? So I want to validate that it's still in the mapping sheet. Otherwise, I'm not going to find any options for that child. And if there is, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the data validation for that child cell. Okay. But what if it's not? If it's not present, right, if there's no parent data present, and if the parent data isn't in the mapping sheet, then what I want to do is I want to remove the validation from the child cell because it's no longer applicable. And that's when you saw me delete the range and delete the parent data. It went and deleted the validation. So that's how that all works. That's the decisions that, that the code goes through. And uh, it's actually not a lot of code. That's all it is. So hit me up if you want to see the code or have any questions. Thanks for joining.